Top of the morning to you. Welcome to Moments of Melody, five minutes of pearls and parables to help you begin your day. A man once went to the doctor and said, I'm the most unhappy man in this town. In fact, in the world. The doctor leaned back and said, now listen, there's a circus in the town. You go to that circus. They have the best clown. You'll just laugh and laugh. That's my prescription. The man with a tear in his eye said, I'm that clown. There are many unhappy people in the world. Oh, they put on a good front. You ask them, how are you? And they say, fine, but everything just isn't fine. They need what the blind man in our story found. Listen carefully to the scripture that I'm going to read after these few moments of melody. I never walk alone, I have a Savior who walks beside me everywhere I go. My heart rejoices in his loving Jesus is about to speak to the man who was born blind. Jesus had given him his sight. The Pharisees had cast the man out because they rejected Jesus and his miracles. We turn now to the Gospel according to St. John and read, When Jesus heard that they had so cast him out, he went to find him and asked him, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? Tell me who he is, Lord, he answered so that I can believe in him. He is the one whom thou hast seen. Jesus told him, It is he who is speaking to thee. And then he said, I do believe, Lord, and fell down and worshipped him. Whereupon Jesus said, I have come into this world so that a sentence may fall upon it, that those who are blind should see, that those who see should become blind. Some of the Pharisees heard this, such as were in his company, and they asked him, Are we blind too? If you were blind, Jesus told them, you would not be guilty. It is because you protest, we can see clearly that you cannot get rid of your guilt. received his sight said I do believe Lord this was 100% faith he received salvation he received forgiveness of sins he received peace he received joy because he had really believed in the Lord Jesus Christ Yes, this has been Moments of Melody. This is Ken Engel giving you a special invitation to be with us each morning at this time for Moments of Melody.
Good morning. Yes, a good, good morning to all of you. Moments of melody coming your way to help you begin your day with a song. An alert policeman late one night saw a man entering a house through a window that he'd forced open. The officer took the man to headquarters in spite of the man's protests that he was the owner of the house. After the man proved that he really was the owner, he threatened to sue the patrolman. However, his lawyer said, your case would never stand. You were entering like a common thief. The officer was faithfully doing his duty. The door is the usual means of entering a house, and anyone who's going in any other way is considered a thief until proven otherwise. This little story reminded me of something the Lord Jesus once said. I think you'll see what I mean when you hear today's verses from the Bible. But first, these moments of melody. Oh, Lord, my shepherd, I I invite you to pause for a few moments to hear the Word of God. We're reading from the Knox translation. This translation has the imprimatur of Francis Cardinal Spellman. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verse 1. The Lord Jesus is speaking. Believe me when I tell you this, the man who climbs into the sheepfold by some other way instead of entering by the door comes to steal and to plunder. It is the shepherd who tends the sheep that comes in by the door. At his coming, the keeper of the door throws it open, and the sheep are attentive to his voice. And so he calls by name the sheep which belong to him and leads them out with him. When he has brought out all the sheep which belong to him, he walks in front of them, and the sheep follow him, recognizing his voice. If a stranger comes, they run away from him instead of following him. They cannot recognize the voice of a stranger. This was a parable which Jesus told them, and they could not understand what he meant to say to them. And so Jesus spoke to them again. Believe me, he said, it is I who am the door of the sheepfold. Those others who found their way in are thieves and robbers. To these the sheep pay no attention. I am the door. A man will find salvation if he makes his way in through me. He will come and go at will and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal, to slaughter, to destroy. I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. the Lord Jesus is the door. He's the one who can give life, life more abundant. And he's waiting to give that life to you if you'll just ask him. It's time to say goodbye. Thanks for being with us. Moments of Melody comes to you each morning at this time.
Morning, neighbor. How are you today? Here we are again with Moments of Melody, five minutes to help you begin your day with a song. A little lad sat on a park bench, tenderly holding a sparrow in his hand. He explained to a lady who stopped to look that the bird had broken a wing. Kindly, she offered to take the creature home with her and to care for it until the wing was well and bring it back to the boy. The lad said, No, thank you. I'll take care of the broken wing myself. You see, I understand. And then she noticed the crutch lying beside him and the steel brace on one of his legs. Immediately she saw the deep meaning of the lad's answer. You see, I understand. The little boy was a cripple. He knew what it was to have a broken wing. And so he said, I understand. You know, the Lord Jesus understands. He understands you better than anyone else. You can tell him all your troubles, all your problems. Yes, all your sins. You see, he's the good shepherd. <laughs> it's time to read from God's Word. We're reading from the translation of Monsignor Ronald Knox, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10 and verse 11. The Lord Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, whereas the hireling who is no shepherd and does not claim the sheep as his own abandons the sheep and takes to flight as soon as he sees the wolf coming. So the wolf harries the sheep and scatters them. The hireling then takes to flight because he's only a hireling and because he has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. My sheep are known to me and I know them, just as I am known to my father and know him. And for these sheep I am laying down my life. I have other sheep too which do not belong to this fold. I must bring them in too. They will listen to my voice, so there will be one fold and one shepherd. This my Father loves in me, that I am laying down my life to take it up again afterwards. Nobody can rob me of it. I lay it down of my own accord. I am free to lay it down, free to take it up again. That is the charge which my Father has given me. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That's why he has the answer to the sin problem. The sin problem in your life. He understands. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's the good shepherd. He laid down his life for you. time to close the Bible now, but we hope that later in the day you'll take time to get a Bible and read it. You know there's a message there for you. Goodbye now. Tune in again tomorrow morning at this same time and on this same station for another edition of Moments of Melody.
Good morning. Time for Moments of Melody. This is your invitation to be our guest for the next five minutes. Dr. Wilbur Chapman was traveling one day in the hills and saw a shepherd boy tending his sheep. He asked the boy, do you know the 23rd Psalm? The boy said he didn't. And so Dr. Chapman taught him the first five words, the Lord is my shepherd. To help him remember, he taught him to use his five fingers, one for each word. Months later, Dr. Chapman returned to the area and thought he would visit the boy. He didn't find the boy, but he did locate the mother. She told the heartbreaking story of how the boy was lost in a snowstorm. Dr. Chapman was sad. The mother went on to tell how much that verse, those five words it meant to the boy, the Lord is my shepherd. The boy had told others of his shepherd, and he impressed on them the fourth finger. He would hold the fourth finger tightly and say, the Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd. The mother said, when his body was found in the deep snow, they noticed that he was clasping his fourth finger, and we knew what he meant. I ask you this morning, is he your shepherd? Oh, I know many say he's the good shepherd, he's a good shepherd, but uh, it makes all the difference in the world when he's your shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want he for the most important time of our visit. We're going to read from the Sacred Scriptures, the translation of Monsignor Ronald Knox, John chapter 10. And now the dedication feast was taking place at Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus was walking about in the temple in Solomon's porch. And so the Jews gathered round him and said, How long wilt thou keep on keeping us in suspense? If thou art the Christ, Tell us openly. Jesus answered them, I have told you, and you will not believe me. All that I do in my Father's name bears me testimony. And still you will not believe me. That is because you are no sheep of mine. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life, so that to all eternity they can never be lost. No one can tear them away from my hand. This trust which my Father has committed to me is more precious than all else. No one can tear them away from the hand of my Father. My Father and I are one. are no sheep of mine. Haunting words, aren't they? May they never be said of any listener to this program. When you trust in Christ to take away your sins, when you trust in Him as your personal Savior, then you can truly say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all our time. Thanks for being our guests on Moments of Melody. We invite you to tune in again tomorrow morning at the same time for another program.
Good morning. It's time again for Moments of Melody. Five minutes designed to help you begin your day. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here's a little poem. Ye call me the way and walk me not. Ye call me the life and live me not. Ye call me master and obey me not. Ye call me bread, and eat me not. Ye call me truth, and believe me not. Ye call me Lord, and serve me not. If I condemn thee, blame me not. able to stop for a moment whatever you're doing and listen as we read the sacred scriptures we're reading the translation of Monsignor Ronald Knox this carries the imprimatur of Francis Cardinal Spellman the gospel according to Saint John the Lord Jesus said my father and I are one at this the Jews once again took up stones to stone him Jesus answered them, My Father has enabled me to do many deeds in mercy in your presence. For which of these are you stoning me? It is not for any deeds of mercy we're stoning thee, answered the Jews. It's for blasphemy. It is because thou who art a man dost pretend to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? He gave the title of gods to those who had God's message sent to them. We know that the words of Scripture have binding force. Why then, what of him whom God has sanctified and sent in the world? Will you call me a blasphemer because I have told you I am the Son of God? If you find that I do not act like the Son of my Father, then put no trust in me. But if I do, then let my actions convince you where I cannot. So you will recognize and learn to believe that the Father is in me, I in him. Thereupon once again they had a mind to seize him, but he escaped out of their hands, went back to the other side of Jordan, to the place where John was when he first baptized. There he waited, while many came out to see him. John, they said, never did a miracle, but all John told us about this man has proved true, and many found faith in him there. Many believed, and many didn't. People were divided, divided over the Lord Jesus. There is no neutral ground. You either really believe or you don't. You can deceive people, but the Lord Jesus knows your heart decision. We're sorry to leave you so soon. We'd like to invite you to be with us again tomorrow morning at this same time and on this same station for another program of Moments of Melody.
cheery good morning to all of you. You're listening to Moments of Melody, a five-minute capsule to help you begin your day. I needed the quiet, and so he took me aside into the shadows where we could confide, away from the bustle where all the day long I hurried and worried when active and strong. I needed the quiet, no prison my bed, but a beautiful valley of blessing instead, a place to grow richer in Jesus to hide. I needed the quiet, so he took me aside. That poem's dedicated to all our friends who are shut-ins today. Possibly you're listening to moments of melody from a bed of illness. We hope as you look up, you'll look beyond the ceiling of your room and look up to the Lord Jesus and quietly talk to him. Heartaches, take them all to Jesus. Go to him today, do it now without delay. begin your day than with the Holy Bible. A reading from the Gospel of St. John and the translation of Monsignor Ronald Knox. Chapter 11 and verse 1. There was a man called Lazarus of Bethany who had fallen sick. Bethany was the name of the village where Mary lived with her sister Martha. And this Mary, whose brother Lazarus had now fallen sick, was a woman who anointed Jesus with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sister sent a messenger to him, saying, Lord, he whom thou lovest lies here sick. And Jesus, hearing it, the end of this sickness, he said, is not death. It is meant for God's honor, to bring honor to the Son of God. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yes, Jesus loved Lazarus. He loved Mary and Martha. He loves all who are ill. He loves everyone. He loves you. Whether today you're on a bed of illness or whether you're well, whether you're eight or 80, remember, he loves you. Well, it's time to say goodbye. We invite you to be with us again tomorrow morning at the same time for another program of Moments of Melody. Now for some wit and wisdom from Saifid the Sage and his wife, Keturah. Today it's on growing old. Keturah, my wife, spake to me and inquired of me, saying, Wilt thou love me when I'm old? And I answered, I will not. 
Keturah said, Well, verily thou didst promise. I said, I promise nothing of the kind, neither will I perform it. I promised to love the woman whom I married, and she was a young woman, and thou art that woman. Wherefore then should I love a woman who's old? She said, But alas, my husband, I'm not as young as when I married thee. And I said, Well, age depends not on how long a man has been born, for some are old from their birth. The angel that rolled a stone away from the tomb of our dear Lord had been heaven, had been in heaven ten thousand years, but the woman who saw him, had he been old, they would have noticed it. But he was a young man. And I said to Keturah, If thou art any older than when I married thee, I do not suspect it. Keturah said, Just for that I will make thee a cherry pie. And my cherry pies are as good as when we first were married. And I said, Yea, and I thank God that my appetite for them is as good as it was then.